So you've mentioned a couple of times um, using NeoVim. I have never properly learned it myself. Every so often, I, I've kind of done the same thing you did, where it's like, I sit down and try to properly learn it, and never really... I never really got around to doing so. I use it as, like, my editor for modifying config files and things like that. I've just never really gotten comfortable enough to, you know, want to do programming or anything, anything really substantial in it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, was because of Prime, right? Mm -hmm. Before that, I'm not a programmer. I'm more on the infrastructure side of things. You know, mm -hmm. I'm more on the Kubernetes, Docker yeah. side of things and um, all of that. But I do know a little bit of Bash because I have to use Bash, especially with AI nowadays. You know, I do know the programming basics, you know, so I can tell what's right and what's wrong. If I don't know a language, I use uh, AI to help me and I correct it and all that stuff, right? But um, I was doing scripting in Microtech routers, right? Because I have two ISPs in my house. Mm -hmm. So I needed to create a script in Microtech before AI was a thing. Mm -hmm. And I did it in VS Code, right? I used VS Code all the time. So I created a lot of scripts for my Microtech router back then. And uh, when I started watching Prime, I was like, okay, VS Code, I, I did that everything there. And um, I started playing around with NeoVim because of Prime. And I was like, I cannot do this in, in NeoVim, you know, because you're crippled, basically, right? You open NeoVim and you try to navigate and it's like just to go up and down, left or right. Mm -hmm. It's it's really painful. It's, mm -hmm. it's horrible, to be honest. I don't know why we do it. But um, like I said at the beginning of the of the call, right, this is not going to defeat me. Because I used Vim in servers, right? If, uh -huh. if you jump into a server and you need to modify a configuration file, you have two options, Nano or Vim, mm -hmm. right? I used Nano for a long time and I was like, Nano. But then you hear the jokes that Nano is for furries, right? So <laughs> I just wanted to, to use Vim properly, right? right, right. And uh, I don't know. I, I started with notes with Markdown because... Uh -huh. I, I write a lot of markdown. I write a lot of notes. I used Obsidian back in the day, you know, for my note taking. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I decided, okay, I'll start with notes, notes, notes. And once you go into that rabbit hole, man. But I started with that distribution, the lazy Vim distribution. Mm. I was going to ask if how you handle your Vim configuration, if you built something from scratch or use something that existed already. Yeah, I'm not going to have a better configuration than what Folky has. You know, Folky is a pretty popular guy in NeoVim. He creates a lot of plugins. According to my personal uh, opinion, the best. Well, no, Folky and Echesnovsky, those are two guys. Well, and a lot of other guys. I, I don't want to disre disrespect other folks, you know, but um, Folky has this distribution called LazyVim. Mm. It's not going to get better than that. I will not be able to come up with the ideas because he switches between NeoVim. He tries um, Helix. Um, he tries other editors, mm -hmm. uh, Emacs. So he has a lot of cool ideas, right? So that's what mm -hmm. I use. And if I create my own config in the long run, I will just try to mirror his configuration. So... I'm just using LazyVim mm -hmm. at the moment. That's the distro that I use. I'm planning to try in my own config as well. I will come up with something, but for now, LazyVim. I ha I do have my own. It's really customized LazyVim distribution, which is in my dot files. Mm -hmm. I have the instructions there to install it and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, I. The the problem I've always found with any of these. Uh... Vim distribution. The same thing happened when I tried a couple of Emacs ones as well. Is I I don't know. It's it's kind of like you're not even using Vim to an extent, right? Because you're using it, it's so heavily configured on top of it, where unless you understand the core basics of Vim you don't really know what is part of Vim and what's part of the distribution. And I don't know. I, I think there is, some, I definitely think there is some merit in building something up from scratch. Even if you do end up using a distribution, just so you sort of have an understanding of 
I guess how the pieces fit together. I, I, I don't know. I've always been the kind of, maybe it's maybe it's coming from a developer mindset, but I always like to know how things work. Yeah, that's a really good point there because it was really difficult when I started with uh, Lazybum because it's a completely new world, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, what the hell is all this? Talks about LSPs, plugins, uh, configuration files. How do they talk to each other? A lot of key maps, right? LSP has, um, Lazybum has a lot of defaults, like hundreds of key maps. And you're like, so yeah, it's... Uh, it, it is really difficult. Mm. Uh, using a distribution is not simple. I would say it's the quickest, but it's really difficult because you have to learn all of the um, intricacies, we could say, and all of the small details about the distribution. And trying to modify something from a distribution, man, it's like you want to be specific. And I can do that right now, but it took me a long time to mm. be able to modify. I can modify it to my liking right now, everything. But at the beginning, if I wanted to modify the simplest thing from that distribution, it was really painful. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to recommend to people where to start, you know, because you can start from the beginning, create your own config. That's mm -hmm. going to take you a long time. It's going to look ugly. It's not going to be useful too much. Or you can go with something like more VS Code, mm -hmm. we could say, because mm -hmm. it's basically like that, you know, built in a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 complex, complex topic. <laughs> yeah, it's the um the same reason I often recommend that people don't use things like oh my zsh for the zsh shell, uh, and instead just start from the shell itself and then add in the things you kind of want to it. Because when you use oh my zsh, it comes with lots of aliases and lots of stuff pre configured, and that's great, right? But at the same time. Especially if you're in a situation where you might have to, you know, SSH into systems. I think it's actually a big thing with Vim. If you're in a situation where you have to SSH into systems, knowing what is part of Vim and what's not part of Vim, like you go from lazy Vim and you've only used that to a clean version of Vim, like, yeah. it's, it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very different. Yeah, it is 100% different. That is absolutely right. That's something that I've been wanting to do as well. Mm. Using um, NeoVim as your um, client, we could say, and you remote into a server directly from NeoVim because there's some plugins like remote.nvim, I think is one of them. I haven't tested. Oil.nvim allows you to remote into servers and modify files so you can use your own config. Ooh. But... um. I haven't taken the time to properly go through it and set up a video in which I go, okay, so these are the options for SSH if you want to use your your only of M config, right? But um, there are some options. I cannot tell you which one is the best one because I haven't tried them, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that is completely right. Mm -hmm. If you go to a server and you're stuck with plain old NeoVim, or oh, Vim actually, it's like, oh, there's a few key or maps that I don't have here. stuck with Vi here. in some cases. Yeah, with Vi, yeah. So that's that's the thing. So depending on, on, on your work, I guess, if you don't work with servers, it's fine. But if yeah, you work yeah. with servers, something you need to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah, again, it kind of depends on sort of what your workflow is and where, like, again, it's like the NixOS thing, right? If you only use a single system, you can get away with not really having a good deployment system if you have a lot of systems. Maybe you want something. And if you use a lot of systems, maybe you don't want to rely on something where your entire workflow is tied to a bunch of additional plugins rather than the core functionality of the environment itself, right? Like, um, I know a developer. I don't know if he does this to troll people or he just likes pain. Um... He writes code without any code highlighting and without any auto completion in Vim. I he 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 writes C code like this. I don't know why. I don't know why he does this. It looks unpleasant. Um I know he he does definitely do some stuff to mess with people though. Um because there is a there is a monospace version of Comic Sans 
that I've seen him use from time to time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah.